Let's look at Kaggle notebooks. So you have a Kaggle competition that you need to complete for this course. I very much recommend that you use Kaggle notebooks to complete that because otherwise you're going to have to download the data set that you need to complete the current semester's Kaggle competition and then say re-upload it into Google Colab. If Colab, because Colab is what we primarily use for this course. So you can see I have Colab Pro here. We will see more about how to actually run, say, an entire large language model inside of a Kaggle notebook. So there's really two ways that you can run the, the actual LLM. You can use GPUs, and they give you some free GPUs on Kaggle. We'll get more into that when we get into part um, 8.4, where we see that you can actually run the GPU and the, more importantly, the LLM from your GPU enabled notebook. We're also going to see that you can use small large language models. You would certainly run a small large language model from Kaggle, but you can run them from your laptop in many cases if you have enough memory. So we will look at that. And then finally, we'll end out this part by looking at the current semester's Kaggle. All right, so Kaggle notebooks. I have a lot of images here that shows you basically how to step through them and, and do various things. Realize the, these are evolving software. Kaggle is certainly making improvements to this. Always refer to the current documentation from Kaggle and realize that this might change from semester to semester. If, this, if it changes sufficiently, I will certainly re-record re this video. Now let's look here. We're, we're going to go to Kaggle and instead of just showing you my screenshots, we're going to actually make use of Kaggle, Kaggle notebooks. Usually you're going to want to go to one, uh, to, a, to a Kaggle competition or you can certainly you can certainly just create a, a notebook entirely ad hoc. That would be if you went to code and then you just did new notebook and, and you're there. Let's though actually go to a competition. I'm going to go to one of the competitions that I created for previous classes. This is something from applications from just the previous semester. So we'll look at this one. This is where you are trying to guess people's ages. So what you're going to do for the current semester's Kaggle, which will be different than this, you will get notebooks from, you'll get one notebook from me. So I will literally give you a solution. And the only requirement that you have for the, for the, the class is that you somehow extend that solution and, and, and make it somewhat better. Some of you are going to get go way beyond what I give you and you'll be in the top of the leaderboard. Some of you will, will, will just get the grade and you know I get it. There are, there are classes that I excelled in and then there's classes where I, I, I just wanted the A and moved on. So that is, or some really hard classes um, that I just wanted the B and moved on. Yeah, I was, I took a I took a class in the law department when I was a young, ambitious master's degree student. That's a mistake not to be repeated. All right, so let's, let's say that here, like I had given a starter notebook. So we'll go ahead and open the starter notebook. And you can see that basically this is, so what I did for this starter, and I'll probably do the same thing. I provided a prompt here. This is the prompt that I gave to ChatGPT to write this starter notebook. I will probably give you a, a similar prompt for, for the current semester's Kaggle project. It depends, it depends on, the, on the project, but if that makes sense, I will give you this. So this shows you really how powerful these large language models are that you can basically just generate your, your starting position for this. Now, when you get a notebook like this, if you just want to run it, that, that, that's great. And there's, there's potentially multiple versions. You're going to want to create a copy of this. So you would do 
copy and edit this notebook. And notice that shows kind of a fork in the road. You are forking, I'm using GitHub terminology, I'm using source control terminology. You're going to copy and, and edit the notebook. So now you'll see it says fork of charter starter chatbot, um, ChatGPT starter. And you can, you can now, now if you save a version, don't, don't do that lightly. Because if you save a version, it's going to try to run all the code on your thing and it's going to go unresponsive for a bit while you're waiting for that. You tend to do that when you reach important milestones. But now we're, we're just here, we are running it, and you can see the input is, that's going to be whatever competition you started it on. You're, you're not going to want to mess with that. The uh, output is in that Kaggle working directory. So it's, it's going to put a file, probably your submission file, whatever files you want to that output directory, and then you can download it or you can actually submit it as your solution. And then when you submit it as your solution, it's going, you're going to get a leaderboard rank. That's what that button's for. So you can submit this as many times as you want to. Every time you make a, you make a change to it, you can submit. I will probably limit it to like five submissions a day or something like that. I don't want people going completely insane and trying to just, just get a better and better spot of the leaderboard. Typically, if you're doing that, you're going to overfit the leaderboard anyway. Then the sessions options, you can use a P100 GPU. That's an older one. Um, we learn a little bit about TPUs in this class. If you want to use TPUs, go for it. But it's a Google proprietary technology, so I focus mo mainly on GPUs. This, the two T4s, Net-wise, that's probably more powerful, actually, than the P100. But keep in mind, you have to do custom coding to use two GPUs. That doesn't just happen automatically. So usually, I would say go for the P100, unless you're particularly good at writing multi-GPU code. And then you can choose to turn your internet on or off. So we'll talk more about that when we get to the specific semester's Kaggle, because basically you, you'll probably want the internet on because you'll probably, I mean, you're going to either reach out to ChatGPT and use it through the API. Now realize that costs money. Or you're going to load a small large language model into your Kaggle environment and, and utilize it. In which case, you'll then want to you'll you'll then want to uh, turn the you'll turn the internet on if you're using external or you will leave it off if you're just running it locally. And the accelerator you can also specify as none because you only get the accelerator for so much time. So if you're just running exploratory data analysis, don't leave the GPU on. You only get it for so many so many minutes because it's all free. So now that I've turned it off, I can choose to run it. So I'm gonna go into this code block and I'm gonna choose run. And this is very similar to Jupyter, to Colab for Google. It's very common and you'll, you'll see it's session started and it's gonna, it's gonna download the data so that we've got all of the data and it, get, it gets your environment really ready to go. Then you'll wanna make sure you stop your environment when you're done with it so that you're not, you're not wasting all of your cycles. You use the little power button up here to do to do that. So it, it's running. And by the way, too, these Jupyter notebooks, this is kind of the currency of a lot, a lot of these. Like if you're using most of these, these tools that let you do web-based, cloud-based data science machine learning, you're using a, some sort of a notebook, be it Jupyter or Jupyter Lab. Okay, now the first time when this runs, this does take a little bit. I'm going to just jump through this.
Okay, so that ran. You'll notice too these paths that I have hard coded into here. That is where your data set automatically loads. And it's it's going to typically be in the Kaggle input. I just usually, when I'm first starting, I will do like the exclamation point LS and ju just see basically what is there. So we've loaded these CSVs into, into that and we can, we can start to continue to run this code and you're, you're basically there in a notebook and you can continue running as you, as you set this up. You can see some of the, the warnings and the, the red, you can't run modern machine learning software and not get some warnings. It, I'm kidding, but it's, it's sort of how it works. And then you can just continue to run this. You'll want to try to run the sample code that I give you. I always give sample code for a Kaggle competition because that's how real Kaggle competitions work. The data that you'll get is always completely unique to that semester. So we'll get more into how to run a small large language model both from your laptop in the next part and then also in Kaggle. So thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to the channel if this was useful to you, give me a like. Thank you very much for watching and uh, see you on the next video.